Hello and welcome to Storyboard. Uh, here's warning you for a data rich conversation. We're going to understand what is happening to the consumer globally and why reach is getting more important than loyalty. Not reach uh, uh, working alone, but reach and loyalty working together. For that, we have a fascinating panel of two one from the global market, one from the local market. And uh, let's cut to the conversation, and you know who they are. Welcome to the show, Joseph. Welcome, thank you. So tell me, what are the highlights of uh, the study? The study is the fourth year in a row that we are doing this global study. Uh, we are tracking more than 9,000 brands worldwide and, and more than 200 categories. Uh, this is a huge base of the research that we have conducted. What we are seeing first is, is in FMCG uh, categories, so there is a growth in, in the market. When we look at the growth, um, this year, the local brands are growing faster than is the global, or is this only India? Is this in a global worldwide? Right. We see that the local brands are growing faster than the global brands. What we are measuring fundamentally is the most chosen brands, meaning how much people are buying the, the brands and how often they buy the brands. Seventy-nine percent of the brands that has grown is fundamentally because they have more buyers buying the brand. Right, that, that was a little uh, worrying for me. Uh, that is, uh, you're saying reach is so much more important than, say, loyalty. Yeah. You know? And uh, then, you know, the question that I ask is, wh why is why are marketers putting so much money into loyalty programming? Yeah, this is, in fact, the, we are challenging what it has been always a, a principle of marketing, just in based on loyalty, on building loyalty, heavy buyers, etc. Mm. And what we have uh, uh, analyzed and we have data to support that, that penetration is the key factor to grow the brand faster than loyalty. Right. And when we're looking at that, it's the fact that when we see all the markets, all the categories, the penetration is the highest correlation to deliver growth. Right. The, so we identify that the penetration is key and we are now challenging the marketeers about focusing on reaching new consumers. Right. Uh, the first element is that when there is this evidence about correlation, but then when we look at, we tend to think that we own the consumers, and that's not true. We do not own the, the buyers, we do not own the consumers. In fact, consumers are not loyal. Consumers are buying your brand and another brand and another brand, multiple brands, that they are uh, polygamist, if right. you want. Right. Most of the consumers are buying probably your brand once or twice a year. So if we look at it, the most often is that people buy a brand once a year and then or twice a year. Uh, Ramki, does this surprise you? This, uh, especially, I mean, I, I seem to have been buying the same toothpaste for the last 10 years and, you know, he says, uh, I'm, I'm a freak, obviously. <laughs> Anand, you're, you're more an exception than the rule. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Definitely, buyers and consumers are flirting a lot with brands these days. I mean, on an average, on any given category, there is a minimum of 2.3 to 2.5 brands right. that are getting consumed. Right. So, this whole concept of saying, I'm loyal and I'm loyal to only one brand seems like a myth today. Right, because. but what about loyal to two brands? That's not such a bad thing. Yeah, so That's still 50% market share. No? Which means, even at 50% market share, right. like the 50% of the use educations. Right. So, if you take all FMCGs put together, like right. if you take a category which is very frequently consumed like soaps, the number of brands is pretty high, four right. to five. So you look at it that way. Right. So it's possibly being bought once a year, twice a year at the most. Right. So if someone's buying you twice a year, how do you reach him and when do you reach him? So that's a huge task in the hands of the marketer, right? Okay. When, what are the other, other highlights of the India study? Well, the other the highlights in the India study are actually speaking pretty much exactly in line with the global study. One is that uh, there's a huge churn. No, your consumers churn, which means 30% of the consumers that bought you this year are not going to buy you next year, right. or they don't buy in the following year. Right. So, which means what? This, this, you spoke earlier about loyalty. Of course, loyalty is important. There are a certain set of consumers who are loyal, and so to, to whom marketers would like to focus on. But most of the brands that have grown have grown because they have grown penetration. Right. The number for India is that uh, if you take the total number of brands that have grown in their ranking in the brand footprint. 65% of them have grown because they have grown their penetration. Uh, Joseph, your, your study also talks about uh, local brands doing well yes. and maybe return to ethnicity or authenticity or whatever you may call it. Yeah. So, it, where does that come from? Is this global first? It, it happens globally. Right. Uh, of, uh, what we also see is that local brands uh, performing better than global brands happen 
in more than in other markets in China, in India, in Indonesia, and Brazil, you, and you, Mexico, for would instance. You, would you hazard why that, was, that is happening? Do you have a sense or that you don't capture? Um, it's happening also because those are markets where the presence, by default, the presence of local brands is larger than in other so markets. Go back to your penetration issue. Exactly. Right. Then there is also uh, another element that the local brands are doing in those markets better than global brands is twofold. One is for the local brands, the country is the world. Yeah. So they, they understand the consumer, they have been in the, in the country for a while. So you need for a many Cantal country panel, not a world panel now, for, this, for these people. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and the other thing is affordability. The local brands are, uh, to some extent, filling the gap of affordability in terms of price point, and we have identified that local brands operate at a lower price point than multinationals in most of the cases, so that means that have access to low-income consumer that probably it helps to generate um, more um, consumers buying uh, the brand. They have this element of adapting easily and faster to what's going on in a specific market. Now, Joseph, I'm going to put you on the mat. When you have WPP, which owns so many research companies, yeah. and you know, say uh, Milward Brown is going to tell Unilever, you know, it's about loyalty and it's about, uh, about brand building, and you're going to say, no, no, that's all junk. It's it's about uh, penetration and reach. <laughs> <laughs> what happens there? Th there is no conflict, in fact, because right. to build loyalty, the first thing is to have a buyer, right. to have a shopper. Right. Then, if you convince a shopper, you need to build loyalty by asking or facilitating them to buy it once more and this is by also you need to build the brand equity so you need to mean something for the consumer that as much as they have a mental av availability that they have your brand in your mind when you go to the shop and you find the, the brand you have higher chances to be chosen but you have to have the right price the other thing is that you need to build about extending the number of occasions that you are using the brand and this is where the market is have to invest in terms of identifying new opportunities to use the product. They need to invest on identifying new targets, new profiles to uh, uh, buy the category. Also, they have to look at, sometimes there are brands in a one big core category for them. They need to look at around adjacent categories. If by expanding to these adjacent categories, in fact, they are building better awareness of the brand, better experience of the brand, or more experience for the brand, and this is creating value for the brand. Ramki, tell me, when you first saw these numbers and yeah. you saw the data, you said, how on earth am I going to my clients and telling them this? Yeah, did you feel that way? No, so this, uh, this concept and theory of penetration is something KWP we believe in. Right. So therefore, it's been ingrained into us and we've been, we've been kind of used to these numbers in terms of saying how penetration is most important. Right. Fortunately for us, uh, many of the clients are also beginning to understand and accept the fact that the better currency in terms of brand growth is actually penetration. Right. Uh, uh, so in, in that sense, it, is, it has been... But conventionally, hmm. if I keep going to new consumers, it's an expensive and inefficient way to sell. Would you agree, Joseph? In fact, as uh, Ramki said, there is a significant churn of consumers. About 30% to 50%, depending on the categories, but in average, 30% of your consumers today will not be your consumers next year. So, and most of your consumers are light consumers rather than heavy consumers. So, that's why brands need to invest on convincing the next consumer next year, because one third will be not convinced will buy another brand and therefore it's about gaining penetration in addition to convince the ones that you have which helps to deliver the growth for the brand but the, the balance between making someone who buys your brand much more buy the brand much more often versus convincing a new buyer convincing a new buyer give you higher chances to growth to grow than just fixing in a short small group of people and try to convince them. It's very difficult that you move lawyer, uh, your consumers to be 100% loyal. Right. Very difficult or impossible. There is only about 1 or 2% of your buyers that could be 100% loyal to your brand. So that, that's uh, the... So tell me, what is the first step if you have to go pitch this to you know, a Paul Polman or a Keith B? How are you going to start the conversation? Uh, we, we have had that conversation with yeah. these people. Right. And and with uh, the CMI team, right. 
and penetration becomes one of the key metrics for them to grow. And they are working about how they get to the next buyer, right. how they uh, really get new buyers next year that compensate the, the churn. And they have a programs to do that. And not only Unilever, this is becoming more and more a common metric that is part of the bonuses, the, the way that you measure the, your departments and the people who execute the, the run right. in most of the, the companies. Right. It's becoming much more present. With that, we take a short break and when we come back, we'll continue this discussion and try and find solutions for marketers navigating this area.